Welcome, Trust Builders. I'm Sue Dyer, and this is Lead with Trust, where we explore how leaders can build their business on a foundation of trust and reap the rewards of becoming the top performer in their market. Leaders that understand how to use and leverage trust are uniquely positioned to disrupt their industry and dominate their market. Distrust of businesses and business leaders is at an all-time high. Trusted businesses must have trusted leaders, and your team, your customers, and your vendors are waiting for you to step up and elevate the level of trust in your business. My hope is that this podcast can help you start your trusted leader journey. Hi, welcome to this episode of Lead with Trust. And today we're going to start a new type of solo episode called Dire Straits. So for 12 years, I had a column that was called Dire Straits and people asked me questions and I gave them answers. And so that's how we're gonna start again. So if you have questions, you can go onto my website or into the, the page for the podcast at sudico.com slash podcast. And there's a place for you to, to send in your questions to me. But the question today came from uh, a speech I gave this week and a question that came through the chat. And the question was this, why is fear and punishment considered negative qualities? Uh, At some point, how do you get employees to do what they need to do without any consequences? So that was the question. So I just wanted to answer that today on this episode. So as many of you have heard me talk about on this podcast is that fear and trust cannot coexist. And in a high fear environment where the leader is creating a high fear environment, and that happens through policies, practices, and processes, the people will comply with what you ask, but they will not commit to what you want done. So they don't take ownership. And so what happens is that they are like order takers. You give them an order and they do it. And you give them another order and they wait for the next order. Now, along in your business, it's a very dynamic. There's things happening. And so decisions need to be made. And you need to also communicate what are you seeing? What are the problems? What are the opportunities? And in a high fear culture, those things don't get communicated. In fact, communication becomes very, very stifled and no one tells each other anything uh, and certainly not the truth. So they just wait for a decision to be made, for them to be told what they need to do, and then they execute it. So without ownership, you're not really able to tap into the collective wisdom of your group. And as an owner, as a leader, you're not going to know what's going on in your business. They know, but they're not going to say. And we have seen this over and over and over in just dozens and dozens, if not hundreds of different research projects that have been done on failed construction projects because they have very, very extensive forensic studies. And what we found is 100% of the time when a project failed, a business failed, an organization failed, it was not because the people themselves weren't smart, weren't capable, and didn't have a lot of abilities. It was because the process, the culture that had been created in this high fear culture did not foster the kind of communication, coordination, and co-creation where people owned the problems and looked out for them and then tried to, to share what the solutions could be. And certainly all the people in all those organizations where it failed they had solutions. They probably could have come up with 20 ways to solve it and all of them would have worked, but not one of them ever stepped forward to actually offer 
a way to solve it. And they also don't communicate what's going on. They saw it coming. They know what it is. They see it. They're seasoned. They know what to do. But you create this atmosphere that just gets frozen and stuck. And they will not share. And they will not tell you what's going on. And so you expend more resources. Or you say, my people aren't doing what they need to do. They're not. So you make it more fear. You put more punishment, thinking that that will motivate them. And you just get more of the same and just gets intensified. So you really got to move more over into the trusted leader side, where your job is to create a high trust environment, where people are feeling comfortable, psychological comfort to be able to be open and share and take ownership and create solutions and then implement them. And you will be amazed at how creativity will emerge, innovation will emerge. And so, yes, I am saying that fear and punishment are self-defeating in a business organization and probably also in a government organization. It can only last for so long until it implodes. And on top of that, you just waste so many resources. It's like having your foot on the gas and the brake at the same time. Think about that. If you're in your car and you put your, you've got a lot of resources you're putting onto that gas, you're trying to go forward, you're trying to make it happen. Maybe you have regulators and people are saying, you got to do this, you got to do this. And so you try harder and harder and harder. And then you've got all this fear that's putting your, their feet on the, on the brake. So, well, I'm not going to move forward. I'm, I'm not going to set step out of my role. I'm not going to tell them what's going on. It's not my role, not my place, not going to do. I'm just going to comply. Then you are going nowhere. And the best, you're spinning donuts. And maybe you are eventually going to go out of business because you can't compete with an organization who doesn't have their foot on the brake. So if you want to compete and you want to do well and you want to improve quality and you want to improve your results and create something extraordinary, you can't do it in a high fear culture. Just can't happen. It's an impossibility. So I hope this is helpful and I hope you will let me know what your thoughts are. Thanks so much for listening. Hey, I hope you enjoyed today's episode of Lead with Trust and that Wherever you're listening to this podcast, you will subscribe. And if you enjoyed this episode, send it to someone who you think can really use this message that you got today. And also, please leave us a review. You know, your honest review, wherever you listen to your podcast would be much appreciated. And of course, the more reviews we get, the better they are, the better for the podcast. I'm truly on a mission to get more and more people to understand that trust is the essential element. So I hope you'll be part of that. You know, this show really exists to help you leaders to build your business on a foundation of trust so that you can reap the rewards of becoming that top performer in your market. I see over and over where no one can possibly reach the levels of those people that understand how to build a high trust culture in their business. Now today, if you're really curious about starting your trusted leader journey, you can get started right away if you just take the free trusted leader profile and you can learn where you fall along the trusted leader continuum. And this really can unlock your confidence on where you are and what you need to do. It's very specific on what you can do gives you a snapshot of your leadership style. So if you want to take that, just go to www.sudico.com and then forward slash profile, and you will get immediate access to the trusted leader profile. Once again, that is www.sudico.com forward slash profile. All right, that's a wrap. I just can't wait to hang out with you again on our next episode.